And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Educated. We are going to be talking about the third type of a microorganism. Uh, we have already covered the virus and the bacteria. Now we we'll talk about the protista. The kingdom protista is a collection of eukaryotic organisms. So protists do not fit into the plant, animal, or fungi kingdom. So we have got protists. It's, it's a kingdom actually. So it comprises of eukaryotic organisms. So protists is a kingdom. Yes, and it, don't, it does not fit into it, into the plantae or the animal or fungi kingdom. So here's the key terminology you need to know that when something is aquatic, it's something that lives in or around water. When uh, we have phytoplankton, which is very small plants, algae that float or on or near the surface of the water. We've got zooplankton, which is consisting of small animals and the immature stages of larger animals, which float or on or near the surface of the water. We've got the sessile organisms which are usually permanently attached to a substrate, to something and cannot move on their own but can move through um, through the outside sources such as water as and curtains. So the sessile organisms are attached to a certain place. Okay, so here we've got characteristics of a protista. So they are simply unicellular or multicellular eukaryotic organisms. So if they were going to ask you the number of cells a protist has, it can be unicellular or multicellular. It depends on the type of protist since they are categorized according to their characteristics that they are different. So they've got no tissue differentiation and they are found mainly in water. So it, this means that they are aquatic. And then they are autotrophic or heterotrophic. It means they can either produce their own food or they can uh, uh, they, they cannot produce their own food and they have to, to, to make a plan like the saprophytic, the parasitic, or the mutualistic. So they are usually microscopic but can be several meters in length, for example, the seaweeds. So they are microscopic usually. So they can be microscopic but then several meters in length. So, so like the seaweeds, the seaweeds, you can see the seaweeds with our physical eyes and they are protists. So it means protists not only comprised of microorganisms. So some are sessile or free floating while others can move using flagella, e.g. the euglena, or move using false feed called pseudopodia. So some are sessile, remember that sessile, it means that there's no motion. They are permanently attached to something, but then they can only be moved by what? By the water currents. The, mo the water moves them, but then they are actually attached to a place or free floating or while others can move using flagella. So remember that the flagella is um, is that whip-like structure which we found in bacteria. If you didn't understand that, you can run to that video of uh, you can run the video of bacteria and look what is a flagella. Like euglena, for an example, it can use flagella to swim around water or it can move using false feed called pseudopodia. It's, there are three options. The others are some are sessile, others can use flagella to walk, to, to, to move. Uh, and others can use false feed called pseudopodia and then they can reproduce sexually and asexually so it means they can have sexual processes or they can have asexual processes so the protists are divided in three groups which are recognized as plant-like protista so let's start with the first one which is the plant-like protista so these are mainly unicellular organisms found in aquatic water environments so this means that the plant-like protista are only found in water you cannot find them in land so they're adapted to water and then we've got uh, most of them are autotrophic so it means they can actually produce their own food be it is photosynthetic or it's chemosynthetic and then the are free floating aquatic plant like protists are called phytoplankton. So, actually, the plant like protista, the other name is called phytoplankton. So, uh, they are free floating. They are free floating. So, they just float freely in the water. And you can see here, this is tied. This, uh, this is a variety of plant like protista. You can see this is the phytoplankton over there. So, yeah. 
and then you've got the animal like protista which is mainly heterotrophic free living unicellular animals living in an aquatic environment so they are also found in water so the examples in abo amoeba amoeba is an example of a protist so they are mainly heterotrophic it means cannot produce their own food so it cannot produce their own food unlike the plant like protista or the phytoplankton so these are free living unicellular animals so it means they've got only one cell and they live in aquatic environments they live in water not in land so some are parasitic and cause diseases such as malaria remember that the characteristic of being parasitic is um it's just uh, benefiting from another organism while harming that organism and some of them are pathogenic so this means cause diseases so it means that some of them are pathogenic so the characteristic of being pathogenic means the characteristic of able to cause diseases such as malaria so protista animal like protista can cause malaria so it means mosquitoes can be part of the animal like protista so others are free floating aquatic animal like protists that are called zooplankton so this is actually the other name for animal like protista is called zooplankton remember for the plant like it is called phytoplankton so for the animal like it's called the zooplankton and then we move on to the third category which is the algae so the algae is multicellular macroscopic organisms commonly called the seaweeds so macroscopic is the opposite of microscopic so macro it means at a large scale so when something is macro as a prefix for a large scale uh, macro macroscopic it means that you can see to the naked eye so for example you can see this if you go to a sea or if you go to water you actually see these seaweeds so you can actually see them with your naked eyes that's why the protist is divided into the micro and the micro macroscopic organism so these are commonly called the seaweeds so the seaweeds contain various photosynthetic pigments which give them a green red or brown color so it means they can what they can actually photosynthesize so they've got what photosynthetic pigments what are photosynthetic pigments are just all those all those elements that are used in photosynthesis so here our seaweeds may be free floating or sisal so it means that others can be free floating or others can be attached to a substrate or they can actually be it just just be like a plant there which is not moving which is quite a root so you can see that this figure eight is a species of red seaweed which is the galadium pristoides harvested along the south african coast to produce agar so we have uh, to summarize this we can actually say we've got number one we've got phytoplankton 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 process we have got number two the zooplankton so whenever you find the word zoo it means it's all talking about animals and then we have got the thirdly the seaweed or rather the algae so these are the divisions found under the kingdom uh under the kingdom protista so yes the seaweeds are macroscopic and then the zooplankton are microscopic and then the phytoplankton as well so they are very uh, so there are three character categories under protist the kingdom protista so thank you for watching please don't forget to subscribe and to tell others that we are staying tuned